Last week, FTX and Alameda Research founder Sam Bankman-Fried was interviewed by American journalist Andrew Ross Sorkin at the New York Times' DealBook Summit. Not surprisingly, the interview raised a lot of eyebrows. This was in part because Sam should be in jail awaiting trial for his alleged crimes, not free to talk to the media, and in part because of Sam's comments about FTX and Alameda. So today, I'm going to summarize what Sam said during the interview, give you my analysis of what was revealed by his comments, and tell you what they could mean for the crypto market. I'll start by clarifying that Sam appeared virtually for his interview with Andrew. It says a lot that Sam appearing physically was very much within the realms of possibility. That's just because the media, regulators, and even politicians have been so soft on him and the others involved in the FTX fraud. I mean, former Alameda CEO Caroline Ellison is apparently frolicking freely in the cafes of New York City. To add insult to injury, the video of the interview on the New York Times Events YouTube channel has the comments turned off, meaning nobody can voice their opinions about Sam. As a cherry on top, the fact that YouTube turned off dislikes mean that you can't see what the public opinion of Sam really is. Now, this might not seem like a big deal, but it really is. That's because anyone who's not familiar with cryptocurrency will watch this interview and think, wow, what a well-meaning boy who just got carried away. This is unironically what many media pundits and institutional investors have been saying since. I would go as far as to argue that this is a part of the rising censorship on social media. If you want to know who's behind this censorship and just how bad it's getting, you can check out our video about that using the link in the description. The link to Sam's interview will be down there too. Anyways, Sam's interview began with a short opening statement by Andrew. He said that the interview with Sam will be, quote, one of the most important of the entire event, talked about how Sam went from being a billionaire to zero, lost billions of dollars of customer funds, and caused crypto to crash. Andrew also talked a bit about the contagion effects from the collapse of FTX and Alameda on other crypto companies, notably BlockFi, which recently filed for bankruptcy. I had to resist the urge to rip my hair out when Andrew asked the audience whether cryptocurrency will ever be trusted again. This is because FTX, Alameda, and BlockFi are not cryptocurrencies. They are private companies that are prone to the exact same kind of corruption that we see in the financial system every single day. The only difference is that they didn't get a bailout from the Federal Reserve when the Ponzi went belly up. After his tone-deaf introduction, Andrew introduced Sam, who appeared virtually, presumably from an undisclosed location in the Bahamas, where he continues to live as a relatively free man. Andrew thanked Sam for joining and got straight to the point. What the hell happened to FTX and Alameda? Sam said that he made, quote, a lot of mistakes, that he, quote, didn't ever try and commit fraud, that he's shocked at what happened, and that he wishes he could have done things differently. There's already a lot to unpack here, but I'll keep it short for the sake of time. The most important point from Sam's explanation here is him specifying that it wasn't his intention to commit fraud. This is important because intent is ultimately what determines how harshly you're treated in court when you commit a crime. If you didn't intend to do something, the sentence is lighter. Sam definitely has his eyes on a future trial defense. Now, Andrew's second question started with him reading part of an email he received from someone who lost their life savings on FTX. He then turned to Sam and asked him what he has to say to all the people who are in a similar position. Sam started by saying that he's deeply sorry in the least genuine way possible. He went on to explain that he believes FTX US is fully solvent and tried to explain what exactly happened to FTX and Alameda. I say that he tried to explain because his explanation didn't really make much sense to me. 
It was something along the lines of Alameda having a large leverage position on FTX, which continued to increase as the crypto market continued to crash. Sam claims that Alameda's position got so large that FTX couldn't liquidate its collateral, and this is what forced the exchange to file for bankruptcy. Now, this is actually consistent with the idea that Alameda was using FTX's FTT token as collateral for loans. If you watched our video explaining FTX's collapse, you'll know that FTT wasn't very liquid, meaning that its actual market cap was much smaller than what it appeared to be, leading to the issue Sam described. The problem is that Sam's explanation of FTX's collapse didn't explain how upwards of $10 billion of user funds disappeared. This ties into Andrew's third question, which is where Alameda got all the money it was using for leverage trading. He asked Sam whether this money came from FTX users. Andrew added that FTX's terms and conditions clearly state that customer funds are not commingled, i.e. not used by FTX or its affiliates in any way. Sam's response was revealing because the first thing he said was that there are other parts to the terms of service which essentially allow for commingling to take place. Sam seemed to imply that any activities related to borrowing and lending or leverage trading on FTX were not subject to the same rules. What this means is that FTX could have theoretically been allowed to use any crypto being borrowed, lent out, or used as collateral for leverage trading. Andrew immediately noticed what Sam seemed to be implying, so he asked him point blank, was there any commingling of customer funds? Sam gave another very legal answer, and that's that he, quote, didn't knowingly commingle funds, and, quote, wasn't trying to commingle funds. Remember the intent. This is when Andrew decided to turn up the heat by citing a Wall Street Journal article which explained that Caroline had told Alameda employees that FTX had provided Alameda with funds after Terra's collapse in May. She said that Sam and FTX co-founder Gary Wang were both aware of this. Andrew implied that this money, estimated to be $8 billion, came from FTX users and was not an accounting mistake, as Sam had claimed on Twitter. All Sam could say is that he had limited access to the data and that he couldn't see the full size of Alameda's position on FTX for whatever reason. This is another small yet significant detail, because Sam seems to be trying to shift the blame to Gary, who appears to be MIA. For context, Gary was the chief technology officer at FTX and was therefore in charge of the systems that Sam claims were feeding him bad data about Alameda's position on FTX. Andrew followed up with another juicy question, and that's whether FTX and Alameda were closely related. Sam acknowledged that they were. This prompted Andrew to ask why Sam told Bloomberg earlier this year that the two entities had become fully separate if it wasn't true. Andrew also sprinkled in a spicy comment about FTX and Alameda employees living together in a Bahamas penthouse. Ugh, let's not go down that degenerate rabbit hole, shall we? Now, Sam confirmed that he was living with one to two employees of Alameda in the Bahamas, but claimed that Alameda accounting for a small fraction of FTX's trading volume was somehow evidence that the two entities were unrelated. If you watched our video about FTX's bankruptcy filing, you'll know that they were very much related. Andrew made a comment to that effect, and Sam pushed back by saying that he wasn't running Alameda and, quote, only learned about all of this recently. He said it was an error of oversight and admitted he was worried about regulators seeing the conflict of interest between FTX and Alameda. Sam's response here also caught my ear because he didn't explicitly say when he had stepped away from Alameda. If you watched our aforementioned video about FTX and Alameda's collapse, you'll know it seems that Sam was heavily involved with Alameda until at least the summer of 2021, likely later. In any case, Andrew pushed back against Sam's response by highlighting the fact that Sam owned both FTX and Alameda. This suggests that Sam knew exactly what both companies were up to, 
But Sam insisted that he was so focused on FTX that he just didn't have time to watch Alameda. Some would argue that Sam isn't focused on anything given that he's always playing video games when doing interviews. Now, to Andrew's credit, he returned to one of the questions that everyone has been asking, and that's when the commingling of funds between FTX and Alameda began. Sam went on to ramble about how lots of FTX traders had leveraged positions and that Alameda's position was massive in October 2022. To my mind, this is more evidence that points to the idea that FTX's terms and conditions allowed FTX to use any assets that its customers were using as collateral for leverage trading. Then again, it could very well be another bout of incoherent rambling from Sam, given that it's been his signature move lately. Following an irrelevant bit of back and forth, Andrew asked Sam whether he thought that nobody would ever notice what FTX and Alameda were doing and that everything would be just fine. Sam said that this was, quote, not how he saw it, and reiterated that he was surprised at Alameda's level of leverage. Andrew scoffed and said that it's not about the size of Alameda's leverage, but the fact that it was using customer funds from FTX to finance its trading activities. Sam's response was super bizarre because it began with, quote, let's go back to 2019. Sam proceeded to explain that FTX had trouble getting a bank account because it was a cryptocurrency exchange. As such, it resorted to using Alameda Research as a middleman between itself and the banking system. Sam also made a few more comments about information on Alameda's positions. Andrew asked an interesting question in response, and that's whether Alameda was laundering money through FTX. This was interesting because it's believed that FTX was the entity doing the money laundering. Andrew is the first person I've heard suggest that it was actually Alameda doing it. Sam claimed that he didn't understand Andrew's question, given that all FTX users have to complete KYC. So Andrew pivoted to another topic, and that's when the troubles at FTX and Alameda began. Sam went on to explain that the tweet by Binance CEO Chang Peng Zhao about dumping FTT was the catalyst. Sam tacitly confirmed that the subsequent decline in FTT's price squeezed Alameda. You'll recall that Alameda was reportedly borrowing billions against its FTT holdings. Sam said that FTX users started withdrawing billions of dollars in the hours that followed, leading to concerns about solvency. When Andrew asked exactly when Sam started being concerned, he admitted that CZ's tweet wasn't really the starting point. It was the article by Coindesk published on the 2nd of November, which revealed details about Alameda Research's balance sheet. Sam and I are in perfect agreement on that one. Sam said that he knew Alameda would be squeezed shortly afterwards, but didn't expect it to have any effect on FTX. By the 7th of November, however, Sam was starting to worry whether the exchange could continue processing withdrawals and was actively looking for emergency funding. Andrew asked how it was possible that FTX and Alameda were in so much financial trouble when they were actively bailing out other crypto companies. Andrew speculated whether this was because the companies being bailed out were related to FTX and Alameda, but Sam said this wasn't the case. Can't say I believe him. Regardless, Andrew switched to the topic of crypto collateral and asked Sam about FTX and Alameda leveraging Sol and FTT as part of their operations. Andrew questioned whether those cryptocurrencies were being properly priced, and Sam said that, quote, Alameda was not properly pricing these cryptos. Sam also admitted that FTX and Alameda were leveraging FTT for large loans. Andrew took this as the opportunity to dig deeper into the investments both entities were making and asked whether it's a problem that Alameda gave $1.15 billion to Genesis Mining when Sam was serving on the miners' board. Anywho, Sam denied the idea that there was any conflict of interest and explained that Alameda would regularly reach out to him for consulting about their venture capital investments. This is the part of the interview that pissed lots of people off because Andrew asked what Sam's lawyers were saying about him doing the interview. Believe it or not, but the audience laughed and they laughed again 
when Sam said that his lawyers were not happy about him doing an interview. This is because anything Sam says can and will be used against him in a court of law. The more he talks, the more he implicates himself, which could be seen as the silver lining to this constant media exposure. Then again, I have a feeling it will be a while before Sam sees the walls of a jail cell. This relates to Andrew's following question, which was whether Sam is in the Bahamas by choice. Sam seems to have dodged the question because he said that he just moved to the Bahamas one year ago and is, quote, looking to be helpful in FTX and Alameda's bankruptcy process. Andrew's follow-up question made my jaw drop. He asked Sam whether he would be able to travel, and Sam said, quote, I think I could, yes. Andrew asked if Sam had thought about coming to the US, and Sam said he probably will come to testify to US politicians on the 13th of December. Andrew asked another question that many of us were wondering, and that's whether Sam is concerned about any criminal liability. The short answer is no, but it was wrapped around a bunch of claims about how Sam wants to help FTX users and how he's had a bad month. The audience laughed in response. Realizing that he was being too soft, Andrew went back to playing hardball by asking Sam about why he posted and then deleted a tweet saying FTX was processing customer withdrawals without problems when there were, in fact, problems behind the scenes. TLDR, Sam wasn't sure what to say. Sam's response to Andrew's question about the $500 million hack of FTX was equally concerning because he seemed to suggest that it wasn't a hack at all. It was authorities in the United States and the Bahamas seizing FTX's assets, which doesn't make any sense given what's happened to the crypto since. Andrew then asked Sam whether he assisted Bahamian authorities to supposedly seize these assets. Sam said, quote, I can't give specifics and that the Bahamian authorities had already taken steps to, quote, protect user funds well before FTX had filed for bankruptcy. Make of that what you will. Now, Sam went on to repeat that FTX US should be fully solvent in response to another question from Andrew before being hit with another juicy query. This was about a $2.5 billion loan that Alameda had made to Digital Currency Group in August. Note that DCG is one of the largest companies in all of crypto. Naturally, Andrew wanted to know where this massive sum of money came from. Now, if I understand correctly, Sam said that it wasn't a loan. Alameda was just paying back money it owed to Genesis Global, a subsidiary of DCG, which is dangerously close to bankruptcy and has possibly filed for it already. More about that in the description. Anyhow, Andrew's next line of questioning was especially spicy because he asked Sam about leaked Twitter DMs with a Vox journalist where Sam admits that all the progressive policies FTX and Alameda were espousing were just virtue signaling to secure more funding from ESG-obsessed investors. If you've seen the Twitter DMs Andrew referred to, you'll know they're a lot more damning than he made them sound. Sam literally said, the regulators, and said that ESG was a scam. Many in the crypto community were actually annoyed at Andrew's omissions here, notably Eric Voorhees. Now, I hate to say this, but Sam has a point about ESG, at least. You can find out why using the link in the description. Now, Sam then admitted that what FTX and Alameda were saying was mostly for show, but he insisted that he was intent on improving the world. He just wanted to play by the rules of the game to make money. Andrew asked whether playing the game included donating to politicians and lobbying regulators. Amazingly, Sam admitted that this was more or less true but that FTX US had jumped through all the right hoops as they were supposed to do. Andrew couldn't resist asking about yet another thing we're all wondering about, and that's the extent and intentions of Sam's political donations. I kid you not, Sam said that most of his donations to politicians had to do with pandemic prevention. Now, pardon my French, but this is bullshit. Sam admitted in a 2021 Vox interview that his political donations were made in order to buy influence. Heck, he even said he would donate $1 billion to stop Trump from winning in 2024. 
Despite these facts, Sam insisted that his donations had nothing to do with influence or politics and claimed that he had donated money to both political parties in the United States. In another recent interview, Sam claimed that donations to the Republican side of the aisle were made using dark money. It's awfully convenient that these donations probably can't be verified as a consequence. Andrew asked where all this money was coming from, and Sam's answer was simply profits. Andrew asked Sam whether he was buying his way into favourable regulations. Sam basically said yes, but denied giving any money to SEC chairman Gary Gensler. Surprisingly, Andrew then asked Sam about whether he was trying to buy influence at mainstream media outlets such as the New York Times. Sam said that he just wants to support quality journalism and that journalists do good work. I'm sure Andrew loved that one. It seems that he did because he went straight back to the softball questions and started by asking Sam about what his parents thought about all of this. Sam's response suggested his parents are supportive, which makes sense given that FTX was allegedly buying properties in the Bahamas for them. This is what Andrew asked about next, and Sam literally said, quote, I'm not sure how that happened. I mean, what? Anyway, Sam went on to explain that FTX was purchasing lots of properties in the Bahamas because it was trying to incentivize employees to move there. Now, there might be some truth to this because the jobs page on Alameda Research's website did ask whether candidates were willing to relocate to the Bahamas. As the interview came to a close, Andrew started to throw some more softballs in Sam's direction. The first was about FTX supposedly being regulated and trusted, and the effects this is having on the image of crypto. All Sam could say was that he screwed up. That is an understatement. Andrew followed up by asking whether FTX was actually trying to be regulated. This opened the door to another ramble from Sam about how FTX was being regulated all over the world and how many of its other subsidiaries should be solvent too, notably FTX Japan. He said it was just a problem of risk management. This set the stage for yet another spicy question from Andrew, but this time it wasn't Sam on the receiving end of the spice. Andrew said that BlackRock CEO Larry Fink had spoken earlier in the day and admitted that the asset manager had invested $24 million in FTX. Did they not do their due diligence on the exchange? Incredibly, Sam said that it was not BlackRock's fault, nor the fault of any of the other institutional investors that had invested in FTX. They were just looking for upside from investing in startups, and they factor failures into their profit and loss calculations. Now, it speaks volumes to see Sam covering for them like that. What's even more incredible is that Andrew even asked Sam about the drug use that was supposedly taking place at FTX and Alameda. Sam went on yet another ramble about how he had his first drink at 21 and the only medications he took were those prescribed for anxiety and said these drugs have no real impact. Well, why take them then? All the footage of Sam twitching like a jacked-up lab rat during interviews says otherwise anyway. Andrew then returned to the topic of VC investing by asking why it was that some of the VCs that had invested in FTX and Alameda subsequently received investments themselves from one or both entities. According to Sam, this was just part and parcel of their regular operations, and he, quote, didn't think about it. Andrew then asked Sam what he thinks his future holds. Sam's response can be summed up as, I don't know. That said, he did seem to hint that he might try and start another crypto company in the future. That's because there were billions of dollars of financing interest that came after FTX's bankruptcy. Then Andrew turned the spotlight on the entire crypto industry by asking Sam what he would say to those interested in cryptocurrency, given what he knows about things behind the scenes. Sam said, that compliance with regulations and proof of reserves, along with liabilities, should be demanded. That he managed to say this with a straight face is utterly remarkable. I wonder what he'd taken before the interview. Andrew then changed the subject to FTX and Alameda's governance structure, asking Sam why it was that there was no board of directors for either of these entities. Sam explained that there were multiple boards of directors for the subsidiaries, 
just not for the global operations. Don't quite see how that helps his case. Now, if you've been keeping up with the crypto headlines, you might know that Sam is almost out of money. These headlines seem to have come from Sam's answer to one of Andrew's final questions, which was how much money Sam has left. Sam said he has, quote, basically nothing, which is code for $100,000. Now, besides the fact that this is more money than most people could ever hope to have in their bank accounts, it's possible that Sam has more money stashed away elsewhere, something Sam denied when asked about it by Andrew. The last two questions Andrew asked Sam were whether he had been truthful during the interview and whether he had lied. Sam said that he was, quote, as truthful as he can be, an answer which suggests a career in politics awaits him someday, and went on yet another long ramble in response to the second question. In both cases, there was a long pause before he answered. Andrew concluded by proclaiming that he hoped the people watching got answers to the questions they had and thanked Sam for appearing, despite objections from his lawyers. There was a round of applause from the audience, and by this point, I was surprised that there wasn't a standing ovation as well. So, this brings me to the big question, and that's what Sam's comments could mean for the crypto market. Now, call me crazy, but I swear this guy is actively trying to undermine the crypto industry with his antics. He knows the stuff he says in these interviews is not true, but he says it anyway. It makes no sense. Now, to be fair, it's possible that Sam's brain has been blown out by weeks of sleeplessness and lots of prescription pills. It's also possible that Sam has been this crazy all along and just nobody noticed. I find this extremely hard to believe, however, and that's thanks to one of my colleagues here at the Coin Bureau. Our head of research had Sam on for a discussion about DeFi back in late 2020, and he insists that Sam isn't stupid. Logically, then, it means that Sam is being malicious, and that begs the question of what the end game of this maliciousness is. In my opinion, it's to do damage, further damage, that is, to the crypto industry. After all, Sam was never really on the side of cryptocurrency. He was always closely connected to Wall Street and promoted cryptocurrencies that are extremely centralized and funded by the same institutions that backed FTX and Alameda. He was even lobbying for regulations to restrict DeFi. Now that both his companies have collapsed, the only thing Sam can really do is drag down as many people as he can with him. I suspect this is why Sam isn't already behind bars. He probably has lots of information about powerful individuals and institutions in cryptocurrency. Then again, it's likely that he's not the only one at FTX and Alameda who had access to this exclusive information. It's likely that Gary Wang also had access to the same information, and it's possible Caroline and Sam Trabuco, the former co-CEO of Alameda Research, also knew the score. This would explain why Gary isn't already sitting in a prison cell and why Caroline is now running around New York City buying coffee. They've probably handed over lots of valuable information to the authorities already, information that Sam was hoping he could use for the same immunity. It's possible that they've even promised to testify against Sam, which would leave him as a lone wolf, so to speak. It would certainly explain why Sam seems to be not so subtly laying the blame for FTX's collapse at the feet of his friend and his former girlfriend. So, the question then is what information, if any, has been provided to US authorities about the inner workings of some of the largest companies in crypto? We could find out very soon, and my bet is that there is lots of information about Tether, given that Alameda was the largest recipient of all the USDT ever printed. Make no mistake, any significant move against Tether by US regulators would do serious damage to the crypto market. I personally find it unlikely, given how much government debt is backing USDT, but if the last year has shown us anything, it's that the most unlikely scenarios have often turned into reality. So folks, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. 